Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, so today what we're going to be doing is downloading and connecting Cassandra uh, NoSQL database to our Go application. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the first thing we want to do is download Cassandra. Now as you all know, I like to install things using Homebrew for consistency and simplicity reasons. And Homebrew actually makes it very easy to install Cassandra and uh, manage Cassandra. The first thing you want to do is, you know, just run this brew install Cassandra command. Now this uh, Cassandra package inside of Homebrew also downloads the Go SQL uh, Bash executable, so um, it allows you to run. Uh, uh, um, SQL, sorry, Cassandra queries within your terminal. Um, now that that's all set up, let's run the CQL SH command to connect to our local instance. Oh, I'm sorry. First, we need to start our server, our service, and we do that by running this brew services start Cassandra command. And there we go, it's started. And we can run our SQL, C, CQLSH command with localhost or just by itself in our terminal. So I had an issue connecting, so let's do localhost. And there we go, we're in. Now let's see what's inside of this Cassandra uh, server by default we can run describe key spaces and as you can see I already created a key space before I started this video but let, let me just do this to so you guys can follow along um, there we go. So these are all the key spaces that are currently inside of our Cassandra server. And we can't really use any of these. So let's let's go ahead and make our our own key space for our, our Go, our first app application. And we do that by running um, just a create key space script. So let's do create key space the name of the key space and you have to do it give it some sort of replication class network is it topology strategy and data center one, this is all inside of the um, documentation as well for Cassandra on their website. And that should be it. What did I miss? That class. Why isn't it going? Create key space first app. Okay. That was weird. All right. So uh, describe key spaces. And there it is. There's our key space. Let's go ahead and use it. And let's see what's inside of it. It's empty. So let's make a table here for our users create table pass in a table name and then our column names in this case it is matching our users model we have a first name last name and email um, Cassandra uh, I'm pretty sure the naming conventions the naming conventions follow this this type of strategy 
uh, naming strategy. I also know that uh, snake cases get converted to either this or um, something like this. I personally prefer the underscore. So that's what we're doing today. So yeah, uh, first name, last name, type text to, and then email of type text. And let's give it primary key of email. Sweet. Now let's describe the tables again. Make sure it's in there. It is in there. Let's run a, a quick uh, Cassandra query. Select all from users. And that's the nice thing about uh, CQL. SQL, it's weird to say because it sounds like SQL, but it's CQL. Um, it's very sim similar to, the syntax is similar to uh, SQL even though it's a NoSQL database. And here we can see email is highlighted in red. That means that email is our primary key and these are our other columns. So yeah, we got our uh, Cassandra server set up and a key space set up and a table. Now what we wanna do is download the Go SQL driver so we can actually connect our Go application with uh, this server that's running locally, this Cassandra server that's running locally. And we do that by going to Google, good old Google, and Googling Go SQL. You can do Go SQL, Go SQL driver, but it should be the first, um, the first result that takes you to this GitHub repo. But yeah, you just copy and paste this inside of your terminal and you should have the Go SQL driver now installed into your Go path and you, uh, we will be able to, to use it. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, what I like to do is in this project, um, what I would want to do is create a, a new directory and name it database, sure. And inside this database directory, I'm going to declare a file called, I don't know, connect or no, database connection dot go. Don't forget that we need to declare it. It's a part of the database package. And okay. All right, so now in here, what we wanna do is set up the connection to our database. What I like to do is use a, a struct for dealing with our connection properties. Inside the struct, we're gonna have a cluster of type go SQL dot cluster config and a session of type go sql dot session save that good old vs code imported our our dependency and probably added it here too it did into our go mod file um but yeah so now that we have this i want to declare a global variable called connection and it will be of type db connection and then I want to I want to create a function called setup database connection. Let's, let's call it DB. Oh shoot, DB connection. And in here we're gonna use this global connection variable to set everything up. So this driver just requires a few things. It's actually quite nice. Um, first, what we need to do is declare our cluster. So that is 
just go SQL dot new cluster and which cluster we want to connect to. In our case, it is a local cluster, a local server, Cassandra server. And we also want to give it a cluster cons uh, consistency, consistency, and that will equal go SQL dot consistency. No, go SQL dot uh, quorum. There we go. All of this is in the uh, go SQL driver documentation on GitHub too on how to set it up. It's going to look a little different than mine because I, uh, I, I, I'm just kind of getting this little, I'm making this a little more production grade, if you will. Um, I know people do all different types of stuff, but I like, I like doing things like this. Okay, so then after doing that, we want to declare which uh, key space we're going to be using. And we will be using the first app key space in our case. Our case in our case. And which is the one we just made. And the last thing we want to do is declare our session, which is where we actually connect to everything. Uh, and we do that by doing that. And there we go. Let's try to run this and hopefully we don't get any errors. So sweet. Everything's running perfectly fine. So it looks like we have, well, actually, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We need, we declared this function, but we didn't actually use it. Um, so what I like to do, what you can do is set up your connection through your main uh, your main file, but the way we have this project currently set up, um, I would like to do it through the router.go file. And in here, all we have to do is call that function. Database, it's in the database package, and the function is called setupdb connection. And that's it. So if we run this, we should not get any issues. And boom, looks like our server is running and it looks like uh, it's connected to our Cassandra database. So sweet, we've got everything connected. Now what we wanna do is that, now that we have everything connected is, let's try to insert some data into that uh, Cassandra uh, server. And the way we want to do this is what the way that I would like to do it is um, declaring a function within our database file, our database connection file, and naming it something like execute query. And what it will do is take it in a query of type string and some values of type interface. And now, basically what, what this function is going to do is you're going to pass in queries and some values and it's going to execute it inside of our uh, connection, inside of our uh, session, sorry. So yeah, uh, the way we do this too is we have the handle and error, connection dot uh, session dot query. This is how we execute queries. And what we want to do is pass in the query that's coming in and bind the values that are passed here as well. And then run the exec, uh, execute method. 
and what this does, this values is is saying is um, you can pass in you can pass in a, uh, any number of values, and it will bind whatever values you pass in through here with this query. I'll, I'll, everything will make make sense in a second. Now we're not done here. The last thing we need to do is check to see if the error is nil. And if it's not, let's just do a log dot fatal. Oh, log dot fatal. And print that error. So yeah, we saved this. <clears throat> and what we've done here is created a function that allows us to execute our queries. So now what we want to do is use it. So let's go and do that inside of our handler for now. Now remember, our handler is kind of like our controller where it uh, the, it's basically the entry point of our Go application um, within our, our REST service. So let's handle that request coming in and map it to a user's uh, model, add it to the database, and then return some sort of confirmation back to the user or the client that it was successfully uh, inserted into the database. So the first thing we want to do is decode, decoder dot, R dot body request coming in and decode that to a users or a user sorry and now I want to let's do let's declare a function called add user And what this function will, will do is add the user to the database. What it takes in is some sort of user of, let's do a, a pointer of type user. And this, right, this is where we're going to call that execute query function that we declared inside of our database connection file. And remember, it takes in two parameters, uh, a query and some values. So let's go and declare our query first. Uh, we're going to use backticks here. Insert into users and first name, last name, and email and values of well let's do question mark question mark question mark save that make this a little bit bigger for you guys all right so we have our query and now we need to declare our values um Let's just do this first. Database dot execute query. And we pass in the query and then just some values. What we're going to want to do here is pass in the first name first, last name, and then email. And what, what we pass in here in uh, these next few values are going to be replaced inside of these question marks inside the query. Um, so that will be first name first, user dot first name, user dot last name, and then user dot email. So now let's go ahead and use this function that we just made and pass in um, this user. Remember, it has to be a pointer. Um, a 
okay. So now uh, it executes. What we're do what we've done is it, it gets the request coming in, decodes it to a user model, calls this function where it inserts whatever user you're passing in to the the execute query function inside of our database connection file um, and inserts our new user into the database. And after it does that, we want to just for now, let's go ahead and log this uh, real quick. Shoot. Gosh, I can't type today. Now let's do print line and just added user to database. Cool. And then we want to do a JSON encoder now, new encoder. We're going to encode the writer with the let's just return a string right now you just added user uh, to um, let's, let's just say user one to the the Cassandra database and now let's run our application allow nothing broke so that's a good sign let's go ahead and test this um, I have uh, postman installed and opened already with some uh, dummy data where I'm passing in first name a CPOP is the best or the at best.com at localhost inside of our API users update user route. For those of you who didn't watch the last video, the way we got this set up is we're, uh, we're instantiating our routes inside of this router.go file with the route API slash users and the users users routes and the router.go file and our update user in this case is our post handler which if we go and check is the handler that we just uh, updated and did all this logic and so yeah everything this is what we got so far let's go ahead and execute our request and there we we can see just added user to database and we got a response back just added user one to the Cassandra database let's open up our terminal and run our select all from users query now and there we go it came out a little wonky but there it is the at best because we made email the primary key the at best cpop is <laughs> so that's it ladies and gentlemen that's how you download install and run the cassandra nosql database and connect it to your go application using the go sql driver so uh, make sure you like and subscribe let me know down below what you thought if you have any questions and i'll try my best to answer them um but yeah, I'll catch you guys on the next one.